Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Technical Analysis Webinar here with Abitrade. Uh, as we get started, let's do a quick systems check. Uh, my name is Troy. I'll be presenting, by the way. Uh, if you would, type OK in the chat box if you're hearing me clearly and seeing the screen all right. Just waiting on some responses. If you would, type OK in the chat box uh, if you're hearing me clearly and seeing the screen all right. All right, great. Looks like we're up and running fine. If anyone has any issues as we go along, feel free to let me know. As always, keep in mind that there's risk involved with each trade that you take. Uh, no one trade is guaranteed to profit. I think we all understand uh, that we need to manage risk in one way or another. Uh, we'll go over some ideas in that regard uh, as we go through some live trading strategies uh, within the session this evening. Uh, there are some nice tools built into our web trader and an Abitrade Go mobile app that can assist with the risk management side of things. Uh, keep in mind as we go through the strategies that what we cover is not meant to be financial advisement, but is coming from an educational perspective. Uh, real quick before we get on the live charts, uh, for anyone who's new to things, what is technical analysis? Uh, basically, that's looking back at the past price movements, uh, usually on, on uh, candlestick charts are the type of charts we're looking at to look at those price movements and uh, we're looking for maybe repetitive movements at certain price levels uh, different patterns within the candlesticks uh, that that may lend predictability to future movements and so uh, obviously what happened in the past is no guarantee uh, to repeat itself in the future but uh, certainly many traders who, who use technical analysis techniques find quite a bit of benefit uh, with, with zeroing in on uh, entry points and exit points for trades by using technical analysis. And there are different ways to go about uh, using technical analysis. We tend to lean on manual methods of technical analysis within my webinars uh, because it, it forces you to learn how to read the candles. Uh, but indicators are great as well. They do... Uh, basically the work for you with different types of indicators. It does different types of lookbacks on the price movements on the candles and gives you some sort of pictorial representation as to when the indicator is programmed to tell you that maybe you should sell or maybe you should buy. Uh, but uh, you know, adding an indicator in after you've already learned uh, how to look at the candlesticks yourself, I think that's a better idea than just blindly following an indicator. Uh, and then at the same time, paying attention to what's happening fundamentally makes sense as well. Even if you're focusing on technical analysis, you should have a general idea of the fundamentals that are going on. What's the sentiment like for the day, for the week, for whatever instrument it is you're trading on? And we'll go through those ideas and concepts today uh, as we go through the technical analysis tools in the web trader. And so uh, if we start on our main website, to get into the web trader, you log in. Uh, up here in the upper right. Uh, before we do that, I want to make sure uh, that you're aware of where to find the Abitrade Go mobile app, which has all the same functionality as our web trader. Okay. And we say it's a nice back uh, to have your MetaTrader 4 or MetaTrader 5 app on your mo mobile device as well. So you have a couple different ways to log in. Uh, and and also the same with the platform. The web trader platform is great. You also could have the MetaTrader platforms downloaded uh, to your laptop, your PC as well uh, as a backup also. So you have multiple ways to access your accounts. Now, this is the Albatrade Go mobile app. Uh, what you'll see is it has a similar look and feel as our web trader and it has the same functionalities with uh, trade protection features and uh, technical analysis, fundamental analysis tools built into it. So uh, let's go ahead and look at the web trader, which is you, you access from logging in up here. And I've already done so on, on a second tab. So uh, this is the web trader platform. Uh, we can minimize the chart. We can slide the chart uh, to see more of the instruments that are in your list. Uh, and obviously you can look at different groupings of, of instruments by clicking on the groups. Uh, you also can have a favorites list that you create. If you click on favorites, anything that is in the favorites, if you uncheck the star, it will leave the favorites. Uh, and it resets now without that Australian USD, for example. If you want to add something to your favorites list, you just go to anything uh, that you haven't already starred. You see the star is not highlighted on 
any of these. So if I want to add this cryptocurrency or whatever it is to my favorites list, then I just check the uh, the star to highlight it, and now it's on my favorites list. So uh, I'd like to show some of the functionality tools uh, as we're getting into each session. Now, okay, so we're talking about technical analysis today, and there are several tools we can use to help us with technical analysis that are built into our app and platform. And you can trade on your MT4 and MT5 accounts using our app and platform. It's just a different user interface, a more advanced one, uh, that allows you uh, to use those advanced functionalities on your MT4 and MT5 accounts by trading from here. Uh, so first I wanna say, what is the sentiment, right? We wanna ask that fundamentally speaking before we get into the technical analysis, what do we think is happening today? And, and if you take a look at the, at the news, uh, whether it's through some of the fundamental news features on our platform, you can look at the economic calendar, uh, you can look at the market buzz, those are both fundamental news tools. What you'll see is it's kind of mixed today. It's not, there's not a lot of fear today on the markets. There's not a lot of positivity either. It's kind of a ranging day up and down, up and down. The markets aren't necessarily running in one direction real strong. And, and so let's assume that you've gone through and done that kind of analysis real quick to, to get a feel, whether it's looking at the headlines on your favorite news, uh, economic websites, that's okay too, just to get a feel for what's happening right now uh, in the markets. And what you'll find is there's kind of a wait and see for what's coming this week, for sure, in some aspects. And what I mean by that is, fundamentally on the economic calendar, you'll see that tomorrow uh, the FOMC committee is going to be talking uh, a bit. There's a member that will have a, a press conference tomorrow from the FOMC committee, which is a committee in the U.S. that determines monetary policy. And there's been a lot of fear about the fact that the U.S. is indicating that they probably are going to raise interest rates again with their next meeting and maybe even up to three more times this year. Uh, and, and that's creating fear on the markets because higher interest rates uh, makes it more expensive to borrow money for houses, for uh, for car loans, for business loans, it makes the cost of, of growing things more expensive when interest rates go up. And, and so there's fear about that on the markets, that there's a, an aggressive uh, policy uh, announcement maybe coming tomorrow with the FOMC speech. And, there, and there's also the meeting minutes that are going to be released from the FOMC committee's last meeting. And so it, it, there's a bit of fear and anxiety around that. And as it gets closer to that tomorrow, we may see uh, some of that fear come to fruition with, with some of the safe haven instruments, some of the US dollar related instruments, et cetera. Uh, commodities that are paired against the US dollar, that sort of thing. Uh, and then we know later in the week on Thursday, that and then there's advanced data coming out about US jobs. And then on Friday is the big non-farm payroll announcement out of the US, which will have huge implications as there's also wage numbers coming out uh, at the same time when that data comes out on Friday, unemployment figures coming out at the same time. It's a huge day Friday for announcements out of the US. So as we get closer to that, you can see the anxiety could rise more and more because the fear is if those numbers are stronger than expected, then it almost guarantees rate hikes coming in the US, multiple rate hikes. If the numbers are weaker than expected, then maybe there'll be a sigh of relief that, hey, maybe multiple rate hikes might not be needed, okay? But, but there's a lot this week starting on Wednesday before the major data comes out, and then Thursday with the pre-data, and then uh, Friday, running into the, the big data releases out of the US. So I, I think that's a primary focus globally because the US is the largest market, uh, large, largest economy in the world. Uh, and as the phrase goes, uh, you know, if the US catches a cold, the whole world sneezes. Uh, you know, it's not always true, but there is a lot of truth to that uh, statement. So we're gonna focus a bit on the fact that there's anxiety coming from announcements that you could see on our economic calendar, if we pull it up here, uh, you can see that, that those announcements are coming tomorrow, Thursday, Friday. And in Thursday's session, we'll go through the economic calendar and some strategies with the advanced tools on our economic calendar on how to maybe trade around some of those announcements, okay? Uh, but our focus will be more technical today. So understanding that the anxiety is a bit subdued today, but there could be 
anxiety growing through the week, then we understand maybe the, the sentiment right now uh, could gradually become uh, more and more from a ranging type movement to breakthrough movements as we go through the week from a, from a fundamental perspective, okay? Uh, when I say ranging movements, it means movements that go up and down, up and down without breaking through. And as you get closer to that big news, you can start to see breakthroughs, uh, especially depending how the data comes in. You could see breakthrough movements breaking the resistance and support levels rather than ranging up and down, okay? Uh, a good place to start might be gold. Uh, we can take a look at gold. And uh, there are a couple different ways we can go about gold. Uh, you know, we looked at it last week at the, near the end of the week, and we drew uh, this technical analysis uh, last week showing that on the one-day candles, gold has been downtrending. We see it goes up, back down, back up to the same slope line, and back down. And then we said, well, it might test this slope, and if it breaks through, then maybe that establishes an uptrend. So we talked about maybe putting a pending order up above this level here, that if it does break this downtrend on the one-day candles, then maybe it could run up towards 1950 or 1970, where the next resistance level is. But it did not break that downtrend slope. And now we're heading into FOMC time tomorrow, where it's anticipated they'll talk bullish about more rate hikes being needed in the U.S. to bring down inflation, uh, about the data having been strong out of the U.S. with the housing data lately, which it was much better than expected, uh, increasing the likelihood of maybe rate hikes coming. And so if that fear starts to build, you could see the U.S. dollar strengthen and pull the U.S., uh, pull gold down, okay? I'm not guaranteeing that. I'm just talking about the possible sentiment as the F FOMC committee comes in to talk tomorrow with a press conference and with the meeting minutes being released, already knowing what they've recently said was they're going to be bullish with possible rate hikes to come, multiple rate hikes they've alluded to, to come uh, this year still. So no guarantee what they'll say tomorrow, uh, what the minutes will show, but let's try and anticipate based on what they've already said that maybe the US dollar could strengthen as we lead through uh, the, the speech tomorrow and uh, and the, the the minutes being released and and then as we head towards the NFP on Friday, okay. So if that's the case and we see the downtrend, we see it's on the upper slope of this downtrend, and we think maybe fundamentally it's on our side here that the USD could start to strengthen again. Uh, then then you start to look at a resistance level like right here, okay. These are one day candles. It's been trying to break, it. once it broke below 1930 or so, look how many days it's been trying to break back above. Once, twice, three times, four times, five times on the one day candles. It has, has not succeeded in getting back above 1931 or so, all right? So now you could say, okay, I have low risk. If I put my stop loss above this resistance level, let's say 1933, 1935, something like that. So a stop loss is a short distance to get above that slope, to get above this slope and to be above the resistance level on the one day candles. So uh, stop loss 19, let's say 35, okay? That's uh, from the current price the current price is around 19.25 so it's about $10 up a little bit more than $10 up but approximately $10 up to my stop loss okay and if you say well you know the bottom of this slope if we're following the slope is way down here but you might then say you know what I'll compromise and I'll say this low point here just one two three four five days ago it was at 18.93 you see it right here 1893. So maybe you look to take your profit just before there, around 1900. Okay. So, uh, and I'm sorry, I have to switch this to sell. Make sure we're in the right direction. So take profit, uh, 1900. We were saying, as an example, and stop loss. We had that up at 1935, right? 
which is about ten dollars up from the live price okay so uh, risk reward about two and a half to one twelve and a half thousand profit to risk five thousand risk five to make twelve and a half approximately uh, and and then you say well, how much am I willing to risk maybe I only want to risk 500 not 5,000 so then I go up and I adjust the trade size instead of five lots I need half a lot to be one tenth of that risk so 0 0.5 lots now I see right away I'm risking 50, trying to make 1248 okay about two and a half times potential profit to risk and so my point here isn't that you should agree with this move but it's that uh, you follow this type of process meaning evaluate the fundamentals so that you have a feel for what you believe the fundamentals support and if you support the idea that hey maybe the USD could strengthen as we lead towards uh, the FOMC speech and and uh, the the minutes released for the FOMC tomorrow and we head towards some big data later in the week. If you felt that you had an advantage selling uh, on this, then you do the technical analysis. And if you agree with the technical entry point, which it looks really nice just before a resistance level that's held with multiple attempts and a support level that's further down. So it gives you an advantage risk reward wise. Uh, so, I can get my stop loss above the resistance with a shorter distance and my take profit before the support at a longer distance. So it doesn't have to break the support to hit my take profit. And, it, and in, in order to hit my stop loss, it does have to break the resistance. Then it's an opportunistic en entry point from a technical perspective. So then if the fundamentals you agree with that direction as well, then it makes sense to make that move because you've kind of gone through that checklist to say, I think the fundamentals are on my side, the wind is blowing in my direction, and the technical entry point is great. Uh, and so that process makes sense to do. Whether you agree with this exact move, each trader has his own opinion on things, right? Uh, and so what might look like a great move to me, you might say, ah, I'm not so sure about what the FOMC committee is going to say tomorrow or what the minutes might say. And if that's how you felt, then you wouldn't make the move, okay? Uh, so it's just an example of a process to go through. Uh, it makes sense to me, okay? And, and if, it if it made sense to you, then you'd make the move. Uh, any questions on that process that I just went through on the support, the resistance levels, uh, how we set up the trade, anything? I'll take a pause for about 30 seconds. Okay, I don't see any questions popping up. Uh, now, I will say, coming in, let's say, on Thursday or closer to uh, the announcement time tomorrow, uh, the, the, the FOMC press conference and the meetings release, the, the minutes release, uh, maybe you take a different approach as well to diversify your strategy uh, on a different instrument or on the same one, but you understand that uh, with gold, silver, and FX pairings, you can also use AVA Protect. And you can protect not only by the hour, but also by the day, up to a couple days in length. So uh, if you feel, the, the, let's say, for example, on Thursday, before the, the, the data comes out on Thursday and Friday, if you put two days protection in on Thursday, that actually protects you with ABBA Protect all the way to Monday because it's two business days. So from Thursday to Friday is one business day, Friday to Monday is two business days. You can get through the, the non-farm payroll, everything, and be protected that whole time all the way through the weekend until the protection expires on Monday. Uh, if you think there could be a big move on something like gold through all of those announcements, and you have a shot for a huge profit if it goes the right way, and if it goes flying the wrong way with that big data release, you're protected the whole time. For the, for the small premium cost of the protection, okay? Uh, and if, if you take a trade size like we were looking at half a lot, you see the protection cost is minimal, less than, it, than we're risking to our stop loss, in fact, okay? So, and you could even do that now. If you think the press conference and everything tomorrow could move gold in a huge way, you not only could do a market move uh, with a stop loss, you also could do a move with AVA Protect for a day or two days to get through tomorrow's announcements the next day, et cetera, 
okay? So uh, for minimal risk, you could go after what could be a really large profit. Uh, you know, if, if we're going to 1900, like the last example that we did with the stop loss, you could be going after 1240 profit uh, and only paying for protection for 342 or so. And, and this affords you the ability not to have to put a stop loss yet till the protection is near its end. And uh, it could go the wrong way and not stop you out before eventually going the right way. We're on the other move with the stop loss. If it hits your stop loss, you give up on it maybe. Whereas with this, you can stay with it longer with the protection, okay? I, I kind of like that uh, on Thursdays, I give examples of using AVA Protect, especially before something like non-farm payroll, because I think there'll be even more volatility. And there's a greater potential for a big run maybe. And in either direction, since we can't predict for sure what the data will be, but we sure could predict that maybe there'll be the potential for big moves. And so check back Thursday and I'll work a strategy with AVA Protect that takes us through the weekend, through the, the Thursday and Friday announcements into Monday. Uh, which I like that idea as well. Not that you can't make a move without a protect now as well. You certainly could because the news tomorrow can be pretty big uh, with volatility as well. Okay, so uh, that's an example with gold and, and trying to anticipate the fundamentals with the technical analysis. Uh, now we could also look at a signal for right now, okay? If we click on the signal for gold, right now in the short term, uh, it was telling you to buy, but it already reached, okay? We had a buy signal that came out uh, at, let's see, 4.49 uh, my time, which was a while ago. This was five, six hours ago. The signal came out and it said to buy on it. And it, you see here, it says the market has already reached a key level. So it already hit the, the resistance level, which was the first green line, which was the expected take profit. So it already reached the first take profit level on the buy signal. So that, that signal basically is expired when it tells you that uh, it was telling you to buy, but that it already reached the first key level, already reached the take profit. Uh, maybe now's the time for the pullback. It's kind of what we looked at with the technical analysis is that it hit that first resistance level and started to drop. Uh, and, and that's what we see here. We see it hit the first take profit and started to drop. And you see the sell scenario is if it does drop down towards 1919, then they're saying look for further downside towards 1905, okay? And that very well could come to fruition now that that buy signal already hit that first key level, okay? So th this would have been a nice signal earlier. Uh, you could still buy, by the way, if you want. Uh, I'm a little cautious on that now uh, that it already, hit the first take profit level in the signal. And as we head into that FOMC uh, data, and, you know, the, the, the minutes being released and the statement, uh, the speech that's going to be given by one of the members, I'm a little cautious to go after uh, the 1945 level up here. But you certainly could if you feel like it'll make that run. But it's nice to see that that signal was a solid signal from earlier today that already came to fruition. But that also for our sell position that we demonstrated, it did not break or stay above that first resistance level. Okay. And you can see why they were saying in the signal to take profit at that first resistance level, because that's exactly the area where we drew that one day candle resistance. So. Uh, those signals you can see align with the technical analysis. Uh, maybe we look at uh, something different for signals. Let's look at energies. And we can see crude oil has a signal out as well. Uh, so if we pull that up, I can tell you there's been some talk uh, about uh, potential supply cuts. And that kind of drove the price up today. Uh, there's been some uh, speculation that there may be some supply cuts out there. And the price already, just like the gold signal, this also came out uh, several hours ago, the signal. And you see it also already, uh, the market has already reached the first key level. It hit the first resistance level here. And, and you know, if we look closer at crude oil, you could say it kind of looks like gold. Okay. Uh, I see a general downtrend in the high points here. High point getting lower lower, lower, and lower on the one-day candles, okay? I see a support level down below 
here support 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 so if I get rid of these other lines to get rid of the cloudiness I do see uh, that we haven't broken out of this downtrend on the one day candles yet it tried here and dropped it's looks like it might try and test this level right now uh, but if the USD starts to strengthen you could see crude oil come down too uh, I like the gold move a bit better because I think the fundamentals are a bit better, meaning the fundamentals on crude oil are there's some news about maybe some anticipation of, of production cuts uh, from some areas. And, and so I'm afraid that that could battle the strengthening USD and still cause crude oil to rise. So, you know, fundamentally, you, you want to try and stay out of a situation where you have opposing stories, opposing uh, like two strong horses against each other it's hard to predict who's going to win so if fundamentally you have two stories that are pulling the the instrument in opposite directions it, it, it's it's harder to try and predict and there's not really anything there that's talking about uh gold needing to strengthen uh but there certainly is some news coming that could potentially strengthen the usd so i kind of like the gold move better uh but crude oil you can see has been bullish uh, a strengthening USD could potentially pull, cr pull crude oil down, but we'll see. Uh, on this buy signal, uh, we see that the first key level was reached. And because it's a webinar that's later in the day, instead of looking at the signals and saying, hey, it looks like a good buy signal, we're looking at the signals and saying, hey, they already hit the take profit, which at least confirms that with these last two signals we've looked at, the technical analysis was good from Trading Central. The directionality was good, and we've reached the first key levels on both gold and crude oil on those signals. And you can see why the technical analysis is drawn the way it is in these signals. You see resistance, resistance, resistance. It breaks above and becomes support. And then they say buy from above that support level, which they're calling the pivot level. And it went up and, and came to a profit. Uh, they also say if it breaks below the pivot level, then you think about selling with take profits towards these lower levels, okay? So if you think there could be a rapid strengthening of the USD in the coming days and that crude oil could come flying down, then maybe you put a pending order below the pivot level because that's what Trading Central is saying. If it breaks below this price level, then that establishes a downtrend that you might think about selling on. So, uh, uh, a movement that doesn't just drop to here, but drops and breaks below this pivot level is deemed significant by Trading Central. And they say that's the sell signal. That's the scenario where they say you should sell, potentially. Okay. So you, with these signals that already came to fruition as buy, you still can look at the pivot levels and say, you know what? If the USD proves to me that it's going to pull gold down or crude oil down below the pivot level, then I'll sell rather than selling now. That's a strategy you could follow, even if it's a signal that already won on the primary direction. Okay. If fundamentally you have a reason to think that it could break the pivot level and go the opposite way further, then a pending order down here below 70, it could make logical sense for sure. OK, so uh, even old signals, you can use the technical analysis lines where they drew the support and resistance levels. You see this first take profit level. If you sold from below the pivot level, the first take profit level is exactly at this support level. Support, back up, support, back up. And this lower take profit suggestion is at a support level further back in time if you looked at larger candles. OK, so the technical analysis is built into these signals, regardless of which direction you're setting up for. OK. All right. Uh, and I know some of you are saying, well, if I was going to sell, why would I sell from below the pivot? I might sell from where it is now. Since those are resistance levels here with my stop loss above there. And the answer is, if you feel it's going to drop, then you'd sell now like we did in that first uh, simulated trade. Uh, on gold, but if you feel like you want convinced of a downtrend first before you sell, then you'd put your pending order below maybe this pivot level here and wait to see if crude oil will drop. Or in this case, I know I'm pointing at, at, at 
at crude oil. So if crude oil would drop, or if we were looking at the gold chart, it kind of set up the same way. I know I was pointing at this chart and saying gold, but it's the same idea when we looked at gold, it had gone up to a take profit and, and the pivot level was down lower within the signal. So the same concept, whether we're looking at this crude oil chart or the gold signal chart, uh, in order to be convinced, maybe you want it to drop below the pivot level before you s decide to sell. And the idea there is you're willing to give up some of the profit potential and sell from a lower price for the confirmatory broken support before getting in that confirms maybe in your mind a downtrend. So, and, and by the way, you can do both. You could sell from the current resistance with your stop loss up this direction and have a pending order below the pivot to sell even more if it confirms a stronger downtrend. You can spread uh, that strategy out. You don't have to do just one, whether it's on crude oil or gold uh, or anything else for that matter. Does anyone have an instrument they would like to look at? Uh, any suggestions? And I'll go ahead and pull up uh, maybe a major indice uh, in the meantime. Since we've got large U.S. announcements this week, maybe we'll take, at the, take a look at the U.S. 500. And Musa, it looks like you're saying you'd like to look at the RSI indicator. We could throw that on a chart uh, if you wanted to. Here's the U.S. 500. Wow, look at that resistance level on the one-day candles. Look here. It's just waiting to make a move. Look at the resistance. Resistance, it couldn't break and drop down. Same spot, a couple weeks later, testing, 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 and it's trying to break this resistance or drop back down. What will be the impetus maybe to break this resistance and climb or to pull back down towards one of these support levels down this direction maybe? Okay, uh, could be tomorrow's FOMC minutes. The, speak, uh, the speaker that will be speaking for the FOMC committee tomorrow, or maybe those announcements on Thursday and Friday this week are enough to break this resistance up or come flying back down, okay? Either can ob obviously happen. Uh, if you anticipate that while they're going to be bullish with what we learn about the FOMC policy tomorrow, uh, and, and that could spook the market, then you might be looking for this resistance level to hold and for a pullback, in which case you might think about selling on the US 500. You wouldn't have to risk much distance-wise to get above this resistance, and your potential profit could be much larger to this first support level, okay? That's one way to look at it. So uh, trying to anticipate in advance has its advantages if you're in the right direction, obviously, because then you have better risk-reward ratio. If you wait until the news comes out, you miss some of the movement, but then maybe you're more convinced. So less uh, opportunistic, entry, opportunistic entry point, but could be uh, maybe uh, you're, you'd be more certain in the directionality if you wait for some of the data before you make your move. Now, today the U.S. market's closed. It's the 4th of July. Uh, you see it says market closed, so you have to wait until the market opens tomorrow, uh, but that would still be before the FOMC minutes come out, et cetera, okay? The, the U.S. 500, our indices, will be open before the U.S. market opens and before those announcements because they, they, they're traded uh, 24 hours a day, basically, Monday through Friday. Okay, so we need to look at the one-week candles, by the way, to see this resistance level better up here. So if I go to one-week candles, this is where we were looking just now on the one-day candles, and we couldn't see over here on the one-day candles. And what we see is there's an old support level right here on the one week candles where it hit and bounced back here. Okay, so this support level on the one week candles matches this resistance level on the one day candles. If it breaks this little resistance level here, if it breaks here, the next resistance level we see on the one week candles is up here. Okay, it's about this range here. Okay, we see here. Resistance on the one-week candles and here. So that would be up around 45.57. So quite a rise if this breaks through that it could have a run before it meets the next resistance level, somewhere around 45.57 or even a little higher. 
okay? If the news comes in and spooks the U.S. market, okay, then we could be looking at these the smaller view on the four-hour candles and saying uh, it has a lot of room to drop, okay? So with the U.S. 500, it's a wait and see when the market opens tomorrow on our charts. Let's see if it gaps up or gaps down or if it's still sitting here waiting for the announcements. Then you know better what you want to do. But this is something certainly to have an eye on as, as the instrument opens tomorrow, but before the, the data starts to come out, the minutes and the, the FOMC committee and then the Thursday and Friday data. Okay, so something certainly to keep an eye on that could have some huge potential. Uh, there's been a request for Australian JPY, and then I think we'll, we'll call it a night. Uh, the Australian announcement uh, earlier today, there was the expectation of a rate hike, and they did not raise the interest rate. <laughs> okay, so uh, typically you'd think that that would be bearish on a currency if the interest rate was expected to go up and it did not, only the movement was not bearish, the Australian strengthened. Maybe partially against the yen uh, because there's not so much fear in the markets today. It's been a bit of a calm day in that regard. So if we're looking at Australian JPY, we can understand the fundamentals have some reason, especially if some fear hits the market, that the yen could pull the Australian back down, okay? Uh, so the anticipated rate hike didn't come out of Australia and uh, if the U.S. Uh, FOMC committee throws some fear back into the markets, the yen could strengthen as a safe haven currency. Okay, so we've got a couple things going on there. On the one-day candles, I want to show you here is a resistance level. Okay, it hit a, few, a couple weeks back, hit here and dropped, hit again and dropped, and now here we are again testing that level, and it did not break that level. If it does break that level, the next resistance is up here, quite a ways up, okay? Uh, but currently it did not break the resistance from uh, a number of days back. So now I go to the smaller candles and I say, okay, now I understand why it ran out of steam right here. And if I think that because they didn't raise the rate out of Australia unexpectedly, that maybe uh, the Australian could give ground back down now, and if there's fear hitting the market because of the U.S. tomorrow, uh, maybe there's even more reason for this to drop. So let's assume that fundamentally you feel like the wind could be blowing down on this pairing, especially through tomorrow. Then you could say, you know what, the announcements are going to be a while. So rather than putting a stop loss up here that it could spike up and hit, I'm going to use Ava Protect on this sell move, and I'm going to protect through tomorrow's announcements. So I'm gonna protect for not just hours, but for one or two days, okay? One day's protection gets me through the US uh, announcements tomorrow for the most part. Two days protection gets me through even Thursday's numbers and data. Now I have to start to look at, well, how much am I willing to risk or pay for this protection? And I could say, you know what? Uh, 500 is my number maybe whether it's to my stop loss or for the cost of protection or whatever number that is for you, then you put the trade size that that's what you're risking for the cost of the protection or for your stop loss. So I'm gonna say 500 is, is a number uh, and you obviously would have your number for your risk management. Uh, if I do half a lot, I'm paying 104. Okay, so I can do two and a half lots and I'm paying about 500 for the protection. Okay, so I'm near 500 for what I'm risking or paying for the protection. And my potential profit, if this does drop, uh, maybe I'm looking for a take profit uh, somewhere near this little support level on the one hour candles. Support, support, and up. So if it drops to where it was just earlier today, which isn't unreasonable to think that it could drop to where it was earlier today down here, uh, that's around 96 flat, 96.10 maybe. Uh, so potential take profit, well, let's go back to the two days protection. Uh, potential take profit, 
my potential profit is more than double what I'm paying for the protection. Okay? If I say, you know what, I only need one day's protection, then now I, I can say, you know what, I think it could drop within one day. Then I can do a larger trade size. Now I can go, let's say, four lots or 3.7 lots and the protection is costing me about 500, almost the same. Let's go 3.5. And now it's about 500 for the cost of the protection. And my potential profit now is 1,600 because I could take a larger trade uh, for the same cost of protection for one day protection. And you could always manually close it early if it didn't get all the way there before your protection ended. So you have flexibility. What length of protection do you want? Where do you think the stop loss will be, et cetera? Or the take profit uh, could be, et cetera. Okay? And you could go back and add a stop loss near the end of the protection time too if you want it. So it's up to you how you want to set that up. Uh, maybe I leave one day's protection and I make a move with Ava Protect. Okay. And by the way, you also could do a market move with a stop loss without IVA Protect. You can do two strategies at once. You don't have to do just one type of move. Uh, so I also could sell or buy with a different strategy on the same instrument. If I wanted my stop loss above this resistance, up at say 96.90, 96.91, uh, take profit. Same spot, maybe, down around 96.10. Okay, I adjust my trade size to be something that makes sense for me. 0 0.5 lots, maybe. Uh, I see I'm risking only 47 with that, so I can go actually five lots. Okay, five lot position. Uh, my stop loss where it is, that's less than 500 risk to go after 2,300 profit. So I can go a little larger, 5.2. Okay, now I'm risking closer to 500, 5.5. There's approximately 500 risk, 5.45. And now almost exactly 500, 509. And potential profit, 2,500 on that sell position. Now that's with a stop loss. Okay, so instead of paying for protection on this one, I will only have a cost if it hits my stop loss and my potential profit is still really nice. Okay, so now I'm diversified. And, and you'd say, well, what's the point of doing that, doing two trades in the same direction, one with protection, one without? And the point is, what if this spikes up while I'm sleeping tonight, hits my stop loss and then drops and hits the take profit? And I say, oh man, I only did the trade with the stop loss and I got it hit my stop loss and now I didn't win. Whereas if, if that happens now, it'll close the one. But if then if it came flying back down, the one with the protection is still open because I didn't put a stop loss on that one yet because I have protection. I only need maybe to add the stop loss as the protection nears its end. So that type of diversification can really pay nice dividends if something like that happens. OK, and potentially both these trades could win. So uh, it's, it's maybe a nice one two setup. sometimes. The, the possibilities really are endless with how you can start to diversify your strategy with a tool like Ava Protect. OK. All right, everybody, I think this is a good place to stop. Are there any questions before we end things for this session? OK, great. I see thumbs up, but I don't see questions. So everything must have been clear. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining. Good luck with your trading. I really do anticipate a number uh, of instruments having big movements uh, through tomorrow, Thursday, and Friday because of all of that uh, data and information coming out of the U.S. Uh, and, and it's not just U.S. instruments that could move. Just as we're looking at the Australian JPY here, uh, I anticipate could have big movements uh, because Australians connected to the global economy with all the commodities exports out of Australia and the yen is connected to the global economy because it's a safe haven currency. All right. All right, everybody. Thank you for joining. 
Uh, just to answer real quick, Anwar, uh, the signals come out at multiple times through the day. Just check in in the morning, the afternoon, etc. And they're all time stamped. So they'll show you when they came out. And they also, as I showed you, tell you if one of the key levels was already hit or not. Okay. All right, everybody. Thank you for joining. Bye for now.